In 2015, Ryzen was formed as a spiritual successor to Pride Fighting Championships, and with it continued the company's tradition for hosting some of the sport's most outlandish matches. Today, we look at the strangest bouts to grace Ryzen's walls over the past seven years. From MMA legends well past their primes to whatever the hell this is. Welcome to the INC, and these are five of Ryzen's biggest freak show fights. For two decades, Bob Sapp has been a staple of the MMA freak show circuit. Sapp was once considered one of the scariest men in the sport, compensating for his lack of skill with brute strength and aggression. But in recent years, he'd become a figure of ridicule, often giving up at the first sign of resistance and pocketing a huge upfront fee in the process. By 2018, Sapp was riding an 8-year, 14-fight losing streak when he took on Egyptian sumo wrestler Osuna Arashi at Ryzen 13. Most expected Osuna Arashi to steamroll Sapp in the first round, and those punters were seemingly justified as the newcomer swarmed the beast with a flurry of early punches. Sapp, who holds a massive fan base in Japan, decided to give this one a little more effort surviving the early onslaught before winning the second round after reversing a botched takedown. Osuna Arashi was visibly gassed at the start of the third round, and Sapp knew one final flurry could be enough to claim a historic win. The key word being could. Osuna Arashi is barely moving, Bob's just going to throw a puncher to the body! He's exhausted. Two minutes, he can barely stand up Osuna Arashi! Bob Sapp barely has the strength and stamina to finish him! After a final minute of intense staring, the fight went to a judge's decision, where after nearly a decade as the sport's biggest punchline, Bob Sapp was finally, finally victorious. He can barely stand up, but Bob Sapp emerges victorious with a unanimous judge's decision. Sapp hasn't fought competitively since the match, last appearing in MMA waters when he confronted fight promoter John Nutt as the infamous Fight Circus promotion in 2020. A match between the two has yet to be booked. At 6 foot 2 and 240 pounds, Gabby Garcia is one of the most unique fighters in women's MMA. Garcia first came to national focus in 2014, when she worked as a sparring partner of Vanderlei Silva on the Brazilian version of The Ultimate Fighter. But prior to that, she had been a multi-time jiu-jitsu world champion who had never been submitted in her career. It was no surprise when Garcia made her MMA debut with Ryzen in 2015, but her skill set left a lot to be desired, even in victory. Company bosses needed to think outside the box to find an opponent for Garcia's talent level, and the following year took on 49-year-old Yumiko Hota at Ryzen 4. While Hota did boast an MMA record, her last win had come back in, uh, yeah, 1998, and with age, size, and momentum against her, the least the fighter could do was put on a show, and for the opening seconds of the fight, the former pro wrestler did just that. Oh, the pro wrestling! Putting on a show here is Yumiko Hota. Oh, and she's caught! <laughs> the crowd's enjoyment came to an immediate end as Hota was caught by her monstrous opponent before being finished by strikes early in the first round. Hota, thankfully, hasn't fought in MMA since. Garcia built a 6 0 record in MMA before turning her attention back to Jiu Jitsu. In 2021, she suffered her first submission loss at the hands of Luis Guigo graduate Yaya Sores, announcing her retirement from the sport at the end of the competition. If you lived in Japan in the mid-2000s, you'd probably recognize Bobby Ologun. Bobby was a staple of the light entertainment scene throughout the decade, best for his skits which saw him take on different challenges in which he had no previous experience, most notably a sparring match with MMA legend Hoist Gracie. The segment saw Bobby develop a legitimate passion for MMA, competing four times for the K1 promotion where he built a 2-2 record, including a loss to fellow freak show fighter Bob Sapp. In 2021, the 55-year-old Bobby was coaxed out of retirement to face pro wrestler Katsuya Kitamura, who had once been tabbed as an Olympic hopeful before testing positive for steroids. Whatever gave you that impression? 
Kitamura dominated the first round with his wrestling, but carrying more muscle than a downtown fishmonger soon took a toll on his conditioning. And when Bobby reversed a second round takedown, there was only one outcome. The win was Bobby's first in MMA since 2005, and at age 55, he broke the record for the oldest winner in a major promotion, a landmark that'll likely never be beaten. Tragically, the fight would also be Katamura's last in MMA, as just 11 months after his match with Bobby, he succumbed to heart failure at the age of just 36. King Reina is a former national judo champion from Tokyo. Reina first made her name competing for the Japanese promotion Deep, earning a reputation for her willingness to fight as a open weight despite a comical size discrepancy, including a win over women's MMA pioneer Shayna Baszler. In 2017, Reina made her company debut at Ryzen 5, where she took on pro wrestler and probable science experiment Jazzy Gabbert. While Gabbert did claim a win in her sole MMA fight, fans were conditioned not to expect a technical masterpiece. What followed was better and worse than anyone anticipated. And immediately Reyna on the attack and they are doing their version of Fry Takayama in the distance amendment! Mama Mia! Despite a 40 pound size advantage, Reyna used her grappling to dominate Gabbert on the ground, only for the German to return the favor whenever the fight returned to the feet. Reyna was able to score a judo throw midway through the second round, and the youngster's persistence finally paid off to claim a David versus Goliath submission. There it is! Extending arm, it's over! King Reyna submits! Jesse Gabbard via armbar! Reyna made regular appearances in Ryzen over the next three years, but as her quality of opponent improved, her all-comers approach soon came back to haunt her, suffering losses to Cindy Dandois, Caitlin Young, and current UFC bantamweight Stephanie Egger. Reyna currently holds a 13-5 record, last fighting in May this year in a losing effort for the deep featherweight title. It's hard to include a legend like Kazushi Sakuraba on this list. Sakuraba is regarded as the greatest Japanese fighter of all time, with his wars against the fabled Gracie family going down in MMA folklore. But by 2015, he was well past his prime and hadn't won an MMA bout in over six years. This, however, didn't deter Ryzen, who booked Sakuraba in the main event for their first ever show on New Year's Eve. Sakuraba's opponent was fellow icon Shinya Aoki, setting the stage for an all-Japanese dream match fans had savored for for several years back in 2008. What they got instead was what many feared. Aoki took the fight to the ground immediately as Sakuraba offered little defense off of his back, eventually finishing the fight with strikes midway through the first. Ryzen faced criticism from the MMA media for their booking of the match, believing the company sacrificed Sakuraba's well-being by pitting him against a prime opponent for TV ratings. Aoki however proved much more defensive, describing the opportunity to fight Saku as one of the proudest moments of his career. Ryzen seemingly learned their lesson when Sakuraba returned to the promotion two years later, pitting him against fellow legend Frank Shamrock in a grappling-only match at Ryzen 7, the fight ending in a draw after surpassing the 10-minute time limit. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. Three years after Floyd Mayweather's venture to Ryzen, his bodyguard Jizzy Mac tried his hand against kickboxer Kozi Tanaka. It went just as well as you thought it would. Kazuyuki Fujita was wheeled out of retirement to get stopped by Ryzen prospect Yuri Prohaska. Cup Noodle Man, yes you heard that right, was set for a co-main bout with Vanderlei Silva, only to be arrested for harassment the day of the fight. Hey everybody, this is Alex, the voice of the INC for the better part of the last three or so years. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for your contributions and for making the channel what it is today. Uh, unfortunately, I am going to be putting the microphone down in the octagon, hanging up the mic and taking my life in a little bit of a different direction. But I appreciate each and every one of you that have helped us get to this point. And you can look forward to bigger and better things from the INC uh, moving forward. 
Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.